if a person has cancer uh, and they've been eating somewhat healthy for the more recent years, is there a, a possibility that that the them eating healthy prolonged the diagnosis of cancer and just slowed it down? Or maybe if they were continue to eat unhealthy, we got cancer five years ago, but because they started eating healthy, it just slowed it down. Is that a possibility? I guess it's a possibility, but my experience is in most cases, if we can get people eating healthfully before they have a diagnosis of cancer, they usually don't get cancer. It's it's more common that they don't get cancer, not just slow it down. They would never get cancer. I'm saying it's unusual for those defect for the body not to be able to fix those defects, except with tissue, except with brain tumors and gliomas and things like that, because sometimes that those things are damaged, are more genetically inherited from the from pre-birth stages. But in any case, yes, um, I'm saying it's more likely if you get a male who hasn't had prostate cancer yet on a nutritarian diet or a female on a nutritarian diet before they have any breast cancer cells appear, it's very, it would be very, very, very unlikely for them to develop those cancers. So you're not just forestalling the development of cancer, you're preventing it from occurring. And we see that even early stage breast cancers and early stage prostate cancers reverse and go back to normal and the PSAs drop down again to the normal range and the breast cancer cells that are detectable in the blood with the Enox, with the blood biopsies with like Enox2 protein, for example, are now no longer detectable. So my experience has been that of the a powerful efficacy. And then we can go through all the studies that corroborate what, what I'm saying, my personal experience and my clinical experience over the last uh, 40 years. How does the studies now corroborate that? You know what I mean? The study. And that we could go through some of those studies, but that's where we highlight those G-bombs because let's take the WHEEL study, the Women's Healthy Eating and Living study, showing that women who had a diagnosis of breast cancer who were then given more green vegetables and told to eat cruciferous vegetables every day, their risk of death or recurrence of cancer dropped by more than 50%. Or the study where we have another 10-year study on women with, breast, with more advanced breast cancer, eating a little bit of lignin from flaxseed, dropping the risk of cancer-related recurrence and death by 71%. Or a study that, so we can go on to study after study after study, and I'm saying that any one of these interventions, whether it's green cruciferous vegetables, sprouts, mushrooms, onions, wild berries, or, you know, or, or flax seeds, which all have more, every one of those things individually have more lifespan enhancing properties than chemotherapy and radiation. They're more effective than standard interventions for cancer. Even one of those things without, even on a standard American diet, just adding a flaxseed muffin is better than breast cancer. But when you put together a dietary portfolio that includes every one of these very strong cancer protective elements, then we have this ability to really prevent cancer in a unique and uh, with, with a high degree of efficacy and also prevent cancer recurrence or allow early cancers to reverse. And so, so yeah, it's the, most pow it's the most powerful intervention. And with regard to the most common cancers people get, which are slow, relatively slow growing breast cancers, they're estrogen positive, postmenopausal breast cancers, and they're relatively slow growing prostate cancers that affect men later in life, where most often men with prostate cancer die of heart disease. It doesn't even kill them. And a lot of breast cancers are never going to kill people. They're treated and cut out, but they're so slow growing that they're not probably not even going to cause, cause a person's death anyway. But the point I'm making right now is that because these cancers are relatively slow growing, they don't respond to chemo. The person has more poor quality of life and no significant lifespan enhancement from chemotherapy. Some of the studies show three years may be of extended life, but they have a poor quality of life. Chemo is not worth it. And those cases, nutritional intervention allows people a more substantial chance at a remission or a complete cure, or at least a longer lifespan than, than medical interventions would. Now, with regard to more aggressive life-threatening cancers that are gonna kill you in a quick period of time, like in a, a metastatic ovarian cancer, metastatic pancreatic cancer, or a, or a premenopausal breast cancer that's rapidly aggressive. Now, those type of cancers, because they're more aggressive and they're replicating more rapidly, it means their DNA unravels as they replicate, and it makes the DNA more susceptible to being killed by chemo. The reason why chemo can kill cancer cells and not 
kill all your normal cells is because your normal cells aren't replicating that fast. And the replication of this aggressive cancers makes them more susceptible to the poisonous effects of chemotherapy. And, therefore, and because those cancers are so aggressive and are, can kill a person fast, their chemo is indicated. And, 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 and you could say even necessary. Like a woman, for example, I'll tell you one of the cases that, that illustrates this. Uh, the, Pam had um, metastatic ovarian cancer that caused her lung to collapse with four liters of ovarian cancer fluid in her lung, metastatic fluid in her lung. That was extracted with a chest tube. Her lung was reinflated and she needed chemotherapy because it was a very aggressive cancer that was going to kill her. But now she's still alive more than 25 years later because she adopted a nutritarian diet, which were, when in any other case, she would definitely have been dead of a cancer reoccurrence, but she did not die of the ovarian cancer. She lived to a full, normal, natural, long life and still actually is alive. But the reason for that is because the stray cells that always escape chemo, because chemo doesn't kill every cancerous cell, it kills like you know, what, 99 out of 100 or 90, 999 out of 1,000. One cell or a few cells escape and those cells escape when they grow back and they change their shape and their structure and they become different cells overall than the original cancer. These cells are now more resistant to chemo and people die of secondary recurrence of what they call the same cancer, but it's really not the exact same cancer. It's the cells that grew that escaped that weren't killed by chemo to begin with. So it's a kind of different cancer based of a little like a, of an abnormal cell from the first cancer that becomes harder to kill now because these cells are replicating from a line that, that evaded chemo the first time. And then the second recurrence of the, of the cancer now kills this person. So now this immune system regained their ability to seek out and destroy these cells that escape chemo because the body's immune system wouldn't have had the ability to destroy such a huge burden of cancer or the huge masses or tumors of cancer, but the individual escaped cells can be recognized and destroyed through apoptosis and natural killer T cells and a strong immune function. So we could say the nutritarian diet or the diet that you were following, similar to the diet I recommend, now can enable the body to prevent a recurrence of the cancer, even though chemo was needed in those cases.